it's time to put this chair back together again and we need to do this in a certain order remember in one of the previous videos i said to pay attention to how you were taking the fabric off because you would be reassembling the chair in the reverse order. I'm going to cut a piece of foam I have over here on the side, I'll show you here in a second, a one inch piece of foam that it is brand new. I had to replace all this, remember I had to remove that. And I have the foam and I have the upholstery weight batting. I'll have everything linked below. And let me just show you how I decided to cut for the foam for the deck part of this. I used a big measuring tape and I measured from the front to the back and then I measured the two widest, the widest part of this chair. Then I transferred those measurements over to my foam. I marked it and now I'm cutting it out. So the order that we're going to put this chair back together is the first step we're going to do the deck and then we're going to do the insides. We're going to do the two inside arms first and then the inside back and then we will do the outside arms and the outside back. And then the last step will be the trim. To do the deck, we need to replace that piece of foam that was here. Mine was in bad shape, you saw that. And to do that, I'm gonna use a big measuring tape and I'm going to measure from front to back. I get about 20 inches. I'm going to add one inch to that measurement so that I have extra. And then I'm also going to measure the widest part of the chair, which for me is 22 inches. So you wanna measure that area. It's going to be a square at first and we'll cut the curve of that that back curve here in just a little bit. To measure for the batting, I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to start it on the outside of that area. You remember this area. I'm going to start the tape measure out here. I'm going to run it all the way over the deck and over to the other side. That gives me a measurement of 25, but I'm going to add a couple of inches to that to make sure I have plenty. And then I'll do the same for the front to the back. So I'm going to measure from the front channel where the fabric will be stapled and I'm going to go all the way back through that area to the other side and then I'm going to add extra inches. So it'll be extra wide this way and extra wide this way. It's time to cut off the extra and what we're going to do is lay the piece of foam down. I have it lined up in the front and I have it lined up on either side and it does not go all the way through to the back and that's okay but you can see here this excess that we have right here. I'm just going to fold the piece of foam and I'm going to use my marker and mark little dash lines around that curve so I know where to cut. I've already done that. I'll take this off and I'm going to cut right this, here on this line. Before I do that, I wanted to mention, do you remember when we took the front part of the deck off that I had to cut a seam that was right here? That was a seam that held in extra batting and stuffing because on my chair, this part is, sits a little lower than this part. So to compensate the excess piece of fat, uh, foam that I had when I cut this here, I'm going to just lay that in there. It happens to fit just perfectly so that this is gonna go over top and that allows that extra cushion that was originally there. Gonna notice that I have excess here on either side. It's meeting in the center, but on either side, I have an overhang. So I'm going to also cut off the excess. This chair is curved. So I'll just take my marker from the underside and just kind of run a line like that, and then I'll know how much to cut off. I've decided to add a layer, another layer of fabric here because the burlap is pretty dry rotted and I really started to see that after when I laid my foam on, you could just start to see the burlap is just literally falling apart. I'm not gonna take it all off, that's fine. I happen to have a scrap of drop cloth. I make a lot of stuff out of drop cloth and you probably have some too. I'm just going to put this layer on before I add the foam. For this front piece, we have to be a little more careful because this is going to show around 
around this edge here. So what I've done is I've pulled the fabric out some so that I can fold it uh, flat against this area. Give myself a little extra so that it can be folded back. And I'm only going to cut on this side so that this piece here will go through. This side will just be folded under. I'm getting ready to fire up the air compressor and it's loud, so I'll turn the sound off just for you. So let me just explain what I'm going to be doing before I start doing it. When we attach this fabric to the frame with the air gun and the staples, we are going to apply the staples along this edge where the burlap had been attached, not in the channel where the fabric will be attached. We're going to be on top of that. If we were to put it there in that channel, it would create too much bulk, number one. Number two, we'd have too many staples there. So when we attach this, it's going to go right on this edge along with the staple gun. Now what I'll do is I'll add a couple of, of staples to this side. I'll move the chair around on the, on the opposite side. I'll add some more staples, creating a little bit of tension. I'm going to pull it taut, but not stretch it so much that it tears the fabric. That was good practice with the, your air compressor and nail gun, wasn't it? All right, so when we attach on, the, on my chair, when we go to attach this fabric to the front, we don't have the same flat area on the top. We instead have this here. I don't want to staple along this edge because that's where I will be stapling the good fabric. So instead, I'm going to staple along up in this area here so that I'm well out of the way of where these this row of staples will go. But I have to be careful of this metal area on my chair. This is how the spring system works. You saw that when I took the deck on, or the cambric off the underside. This is where the springs attach. So when I attach this, I'm going to try to staple above this line and be careful of that. I also got to thinking that this area right here that kind of dips in a little bit, I was going to put this scrap on top with the other foam, but I think instead what I'm going to do is lay it in here, pull that fabric over, and then I'm going to be able to staple over top of that and that'll provide some support where this roll is right here. Now it's time to cut away all this excess fabric and that's just as simple as running your scissors right across that edge. You can see I've cut it just so it goes just to the channel. So I can clearly see the channel, but I'm giving plenty of excess to hold on so it doesn't rip out right there. All right, I've got the decorative piece of fabric laid out on the deck of the chair, and I wanna point out, remember I said I had two different kinds of fabric. One has the stripe, where is that? It's over there somewhere. One has the stripe and one is just the plain fabric. I've decided on the deck, I'm just going to use the plain fabric. For the cushion, I'm going to use the one with the stripe, and I'll probably put the striped fabric on the back 
the way that the stripe is, I'm not sure it would show here. So I don't know, we'll see as we go. But for the deck, I'm going to use the solid piece. I cut a piece of fabric, plenty big enough, like the measurements that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to make the same relief cut where the piece of wood here is, the wood frame is. And I just want to really think it through before I do that because this is the good fabric. But we've practiced up to this point. We've practiced with the scrap of fabric on the underlayer. We have practiced with the batting. We've had plenty of practice, so we're just going to go for it. So what I've done is I've laid out the fabric. I know I have plenty of extra on either side. I know I have that, and I know I have plenty to go through to the back. And then also I have all the excess on the front of the chair. So I have plenty. I've just laid it down nice and flat here where I'm going to make the cut. No wrinkles, no gaps. And I can clearly see where that wood frame is. And I'm going to cut directly into that wood frame. I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. I'm gonna get pretty close. I'm about an inch away. And what I wanna do is make a Y cut. So I've aimed for the center of the wood frame and I'm going to make like a Y. I'm gonna veer off a little bit. That's about a one inch cut that way and a one inch cut that way. And that gives me plenty of ease to work around that piece of wood. So let's go, well, we can't put that one back there yet. Let's go ahead and test it out and make sure it looks good. Let's do that. <coughs> Yep, that's going to go around there just perfectly. I'm gonna pull that back out. And before I pull it all the way through, I'm gonna get the other side cut as well. And I can get the front of it cut too. But let's go ahead and cut the back one this time. Make sure you can see that. I'm going to lay it nice and flat. Right at an angle. Everything's laying nice and flat. You see my piece of wood right here. Let me get you in a little closer about as close as I can get you with the camera. Anyway, here's the piece of wood. I can feel that with my fingers. I'm going to aim for the center mark of it. Sure, I don't have any creases anywhere, and I'm going to cut a line right there. I'm going to get about an inch away from that piece of wood, and I'm going to cut my little Y there. And there. Now we can put that back piece through pretty clearly. We're just gonna shove that back in there. You remember we could see the gap and now we can't anymore. Pull that all the way back and when we get back there I'll straighten that up even more. Now let's cut the front. We've already cut this before so we know exactly what to do. We've got it laid flat here and we're going to cut towards this edge. You see that? Towards this edge. Remember, this is the edge that's going to fold under. Just gonna cut right there, pretty close to the end of it, not all the way, just to give myself a little leeway. Shove all that through. See our little Y piece right there? That's just gonna fold under. Go ahead and fold that under, there we go. And then we will be cutting the excess off of this. We'll go ahead and cut about an inch of excess. I wanna make sure I have plenty. It's going to fold under. Just like that. So we're going to cut towards this part of the arm right here. I'm going to leave the front of it just the way that it is until I get the side stapled and then we'll go from there. All right, we're on the side of the chair now and I wanna show you that, remember the other fabric we stapled here on the top. We did not staple in the channel. Now is when we're going to staple in this channel and I'm not going to staple too close together because when I do the inside arm, that fabric is also going to come through and get stapled in the same place. So I wanna leave myself plenty of room for two rows of staples. Remember when we took the old batting off, how there was all this extra stuffing right here? Well, if you want, you could use the extra stuffing, the excess that you cut off, and you could fill those areas with that extra stuffing. That way, when it gets folded over, you won't feel a gap there. I think I'm going to go ahead and 
do it because why not? I have the excess and I might as well use it, especially in an area like that. I could just stuff that underneath, put the batting back over top and then the good fabric over top of that and it smooths it right out rather than, I don't know if you can tell, there's a bit of a dip there without it. So this actually helps. I'm going to go ahead and cut off some of this excess. I don't want to waste it because I could make this into a pillow or something. But for now, just to get it out of the way, I'm going to leave myself plenty of room. Just cut off the extra. I'm also not going to cut off the excess here yet. I won't cut this off until I put the inside arm back in and through here. That way I can pull both of those pieces taut and staple them at the same time in this area. And you need a little bit of fabric to grip it. So I won't be cutting that yet. These are just tack strips just to hold it in place. So for the front, let's take a look at what we have going on here. So we have that under fabric, we have the piece of foam, we have the batting that's going to come across, and then we have the fabric that goes on top. Now this is going to be stapled right along this channel edge. You can see the previous staple marks, and it is below the row of staples that we used to cover that first layer of fabric. So we're going to staple right along in there. I'm going to start in the center, and then I'm going to work out Okay, so you know how that fa fabric is folded back here. I decided to fold it around this to hide the batting a little bit. Basically, I unfolded it and I'm tucking that batting inside and then I'm folding it back around the batting. That way it gives me a nice clean edge so it covers that edge nice. And I'm going to fold it and fold it until I'm sure that it looks really good because look what happens. You get this excess. You wanna keep this going in that direction and when you do that, sometimes you get too much, so you have to refold it. Just wanna make sure you get this really nice and clean looking because this is going to show. So I folded back more, that way when I pull it back and it's tight over here, it's lining up exactly where it should be over here. So again, I have too much of the batting, so I need to cut some of that off. It's a little bit of finagling, but it's worth it to take your time and get this part right. Now that I have it all tacked down, I'm just going to go back and run a row of staples all along this edge. You cut that fabric off, all you have to do is run your the blade of the scissor right along that ridge where that channel is and you just cut along. 